Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about 802.1x authentication. So 802.1x is a standard which defines rules for authenticating users who want to access wired or wireless network. For example, there is a user with its smartphone and there is some maybe access point in the network and the user wants to access maybe the internet using that access point. So in this case, we want to say we want to authenticate the users that whether the user is a legitimate user or not. So for that, we will be using this 802.1x. This has uh, mainly three entities or three elements. The first one is the supplicant. So supplicant is a client which wants to access the um, internet or the network resources and, and that client will have a required hardware as well as the software in there. And the second entity is the authenticator or gate and that authenticator can be a switch or that can be an access point or a wireless LAN controller. And the third entity is the authentication server. So that can be, for example, a radius server. And then this radius server will have uh, an associated uh, link with the database where actually the username and passwords will be saved. That can be like an active directory. Now these are the main elements of 802.1x and we want authentication. So for that we need some authentication messages and for that we have this EEP. So EEP is an extensible authentication protocol and this is actually a framework, not a specific protocol. This is a framework which provides a guideline for the authentication methods. So we can have various authentication methods known as EEP methods. Like in our previous video, we have discussed many EEP methods like leap, EEP fast, EEP TLS, and PEEP. So these are authentication methods which are following this EEP. And now this EEP actually defines only the message format, only the message format, but we require some other protocols for encapsulation of these messages. So we have the message and we want to encapsulate them. So for these messages to be encapsulated from supplicant to the authenticator, we have the epoll. So these eep messages will be encapsulated in epoll. So epoll, eep will be carried there. And for same eep messages will be encapsulated in radius protocol using radius protocol and when these EAP messages will be transmitted from authenticator to the authentication server or this radius server, so authentication server. Now, let's just remove it. Now the association between supplicant and authenticator, actually this is needed so that the message can go to this authentication server. So because we have the data here, but users should be able to access at least this authenticator are just the access point so when the user gets access to this one then this authenticator can forward the credential to the authentication server and for that the from supplicant to the authenticator we use this open authentication where we don't need any password so this open authentication is actually given by 802.1 standard so we don't need any password and users and authenticator they get associated with that and now once this association has been done this credentials are further forwarded to the authentication server and the actual authentication actually takes place at this server so with this basic let's uh, let's go to the next slide and see what messages are exchanged between the supplicant authenticator and authentication server for uh, uh, for the authentication of the user so that user can access the network resources or the internet. So the first message by the supplicant, which is basically an optional message that is sent by the supplicant or the client, which is epoll star. So this is an optional message and clients, client maybe wants to wants uh, his, his willingness to be sent to the authenticator or maybe sometimes authenticator knows that this user wants to use it. So this is an optional message it authenticator receives this message and uh, then authenticator sends a message to the supplicant that is epoll packet or epoll request where the authenticator asks for the identity from the supplicant and the supplicant maybe can provide the username 
in response to that uh, request. So now the authenticator received the username. For example, here the authenticator received the username and now the authenticator will actually open a port and through that port only the EAP messages can be forwarded. So not the rest of the traffic, only the EAP message can be sent using this open port. And now this username which has uh, been received by authenticator that will be forwarded to the authentication server. An authentication server will look into its database and if, if it will find out the username and if the username is there then authentication uh, server will send an access challenge message and that access challenge message maybe authentication server will ask for a password for instance an authenticator will just forward this message in the form of challenge request epoll challenge request to the supplicant and the supplicant will give back its response in the in the form of maybe maybe in the form of a password and then authenticated forwards that um, message or that password back to the authentication server authentication server will again look into its database and if it finds the corresponding password there for instance then ultimately it will send a message of acceptance and at this stage the authenticator will open that port for all traffic on this uh, authenticator and then it will send that success message to the supplicant. So after exchange of these messages, both the supplicant and authentication server might have generated or they have generated this uh, master session key that is known as MSK. So we have this MSK at this point as well as MSK at this point, master session key. And this master session key is used to generate pairwise master key, so PMK. Now for instance, this is the PMK at this point. So this PMK here and this is the PMK here. Now this PMK is generated at the authentication server and this PMK will be handed over to the access point or the authenticator. So after these uh, all exchange of messages, the supplicant will have a PMK pairwise master key and authenticator will have a PMK pairwise master key. So at this point, the, the authentication server has actually authenticated the user to use the network resources or to use the internet. And now next step would be to find out the key encryption key used to encrypt the traffic. So these all steps were only for authenticating the user. And then the most uh, the, the important point which is always mentioned is that that this pair this pairwise master key is generated here locally. And this pairwise master key has not been transmitted on the air. It means no hacker and no one has the access to this PMK, pairwise master key. This is important. This has not been exchanged over the air. Now at this point, we will use four-way handshake. And this is used to find out the uh, encryption keys to encrypt the data. So we saw that at this stage, both the supplicant as well as authenticator, they have the PMK, pairwise master key. So now this is time to create the data encryption keys. And for data encryption keys, one key is actually the PTK that is pairwise transient key that is used for unicast encryption. So when we just sending to one uh, destination, that is, will be, that is the pairwise transient key will be used. And the second one is when we want to send the data to multiple group or we want to broadcast it, then we need GTK that is group temporal key. Now to create this PTK or pairwise transient key, we need some ingredients there or we need some input. For example, we can say there is a box like this one to generate a PTK. But for that, we need these all things as an input. So that is PMK that is, that is there. They have there this one pairwise master key and then this needs the a nums s nums and the mac address of supplicant this one as well as this one so this is the basic uh, 
uh, requirement to calculate this pairwise transient key. So for this, what happens? The authenticator sends I a nuns. So a nuns is actually a randomly generated number. An authenticator sends that number to the supplicant. And now supplicant actually has this PMK with it. So we say that initially we said the PMK, this will have the PMK. And now the supplicant has actually the A nuns. So the nuns actually is the authenticator number used once. So a random number. So now it has the A nuns and S none is has to be generated by this host itself. And so it has these all three things. And for these two things, these two things would have been um, exchanged from each other during the previous steps, during the authentication step. So now this supplicate has all the ingredients to calculate this PTK. So it will calculate its PTK and then it will send the S nuns to the authenticator because authenticator has the a nuns but doesn't have the s nuns that is basically the number from supplicant so now the authenticator also has these all things for example this has the pmk already has the pmk a nuns s nuns, and the and the addresses from both of the participant and and this ptk also send the message integrity check or message integrity code so now this authenticator will also calculate its PTK are pairwise transient key and it will also calculate the group master key and that group master key is actually used to calculate this GTK that is group temporal key which will be used for broadcast or multicast so this authenticator will send that key to the supplicant and the supplicant will finally send an acknowledgement that all good and I have received or exchange the required keys for encryption and authentication and after this both of them have the key and they have authenticated, authenticated each other and the supplicant actually use the internet services so for example the supplicant now can use this access point to further access the internet okay so many steps required for authentication and generating the encryption key and I hope this discussion was a bit uh, useful for you and hope to see you in some other video. Thank you.